am on the third day of a fast and I'm about to channel Thoth. It's intense. I would like you to comprehend what is occurring. There are many ways in which the world will continue to change what it has been. History has come to an end. In this transformation, the presence of the patterns of the past is deteriorating. It is falling apart and it is only your investment that keeps it alive. By divesting from the past, you can have the most dramatic impact on your present. Understand, you do not need to fight it unless you are directly asked to. Consider the atrocious patterns of history as lingering dead vegetation that is waiting to be composted. If you cut it to pieces, it will hasten the return to the earth. You may need to do so for the sake of your own heart, but you do not need to do so to ensure this transition. The transition has already begun. As you realize the truth of the dissolution of the old veils, understand that the greatest impact you can have is to accentuate your connection to divine presence, the crystalline consciousness. To do this is to appreciate that many beings have been forging this web of light it is neither above nor below you. It is around and through you. It is the presence of the new way of being, a concurrent resonance that exists in the place that you know of as the earth. Within, without, above, below, this resonance is available for you to transition your focus. Every act you make to focus and tune with this resonance accentuates its presence in the material plane you inhabit. The three-dimensional plane has been led to this point. The fourth-dimensional journey through time has a transition window and during this time, it is possible for you to most greatly impact the course. To do this is to know yourself as someone who exists in health based on the patterns that will be trustworthy. And because you can look forward into the future and know that these patterns are the ground and the air you will breathe, you can trust them now. Make no mistake, in some ways, this involves more suffering. You must see the presence of the pain, the atrocious dynamics that were prevalent and dominant in history. You must know these patterns in the lives that you lead and share. You must see the ways in which those you love remain committed to these dying ways. You will have an instinct to fight them. You will have a terror of their ability to hurt you and in some ways worse, to draw you back into the old ways. To successfully navigate through this transition, you must first rest in the trust that they will not succeed. The difference you can make is in your experience first. 
if you tried to recreate history, you will fail. Thus, those who do try are not as nefarious as they may seem. To breathe through the moments of fear is to recognize that the trust exists with more power already. Will you help bring this light into your life and the lives of those who surround you? To do this is not to win every battle. It is to win the transformation itself within your communities. It is to be the light even when the storms tear down the forces that you love. It is to trust that everything you do may be cut back, but the roots will keep getting stronger. And thus, I call you to trust your investment in this future, even if it does not seem to be working well yet. Be willing to confront your own self-doubt for what it is. Be willing to address your own pessimism. Recognize the ways you may fear to act out of love. Responding to the ways that it has hurt you, to the ways you have watched your efforts fall apart. Invest in the trust that even if your efforts have failed time and again, and even if they will fail in the future time and again, your roots will keep growing deeper. You are not failing at the work that is most important because the most important work is to forge the connection between the divine presence that you may know as the future. By any name you give this, there is a world awaiting that is made of a full spectrum of light. Abuse is not possible, much less tolerated. The instinct to be abusive backlashes quickly because the laws of spiritual physics change in a manner that makes this so. And as you learn to trust this, you will find it easier and easier to invest in what will work best for you in your life. By all means, commit to knowing yourself in this new way. Trust that your heart will come to life more and more out of the roots. And no matter what happens, no matter how your efforts are or are not received, you will get stronger and stronger as you commit to this path. And you will experience the gifts of this love well before you see them flowering and bearing fruit in the world. This is really intense guidance. It can fundamentally change your life. The first lesson Doth taught me was a sacred pattern that aligns 12 chakras within our body. When we align these chakras in this way, we stay healthy, tuned with the reality that is coming into being. I invite you to explore the chakras in the key ring playlist. There's also a yoga channel, Wild Chakra Yoga. You can find it in the description. If you go there, there's a foundational practices playlist. I encourage you to do one of these every other day, 20 minutes every other day. It keeps you tuned. There's a wide range of blessings to this, and we are excited to welcome you into them and support you. Much love.